What's up, Collider fans? It's Friday afternoon, Woo! and you know what that means. It's time for the winners and losers of the week. Winners and losers of the week. I feel like it should have some kind of presentation. Sorry, go ahead, Jeff. I apologize. Okay. Jeff Snyder here, joined by John Roca. And we're trying something a little bit new this time. Uh, yep. We're doing the winners and losers of the week. This is your idea. Yeah. So I'm, my, I'm excited my for genius it. genius idea, so direct all the hate at me in the comment section. <laughs> uh, we're going to start this, this, this uh, segment off with the winners. Okay. And, and who better to start with than Stephen King, the man right behind me. Big news happening with Stephen King. Yeah. Uh, Firestarter got a director this week in yeah. Uh, Fatih Akin, uh, Rebecca Ferguson named the fi female lead of Doctor Sleep, mm -hmm. The Boogeyman getting an adaptation from uh, Beck and Woods, the writers of A Quiet Place. Yeah. That is a lot of Stephen King news, and it just shows that this guy's uh, writing is as relevant as ever. Yeah, who's who's a winner on your list? Well, I've got Black Panther on my list. Uh, he, he's won, the, the film won five Saturn Awards this week after sweeping the MTV Movie Awards, and you might say, "Oh, those things are not the Oscars," or anything, but they are building momentum for this movie. The longer it stays in the public consciousness, the quicker it will become in contention for a best picture, in my opinion. And you had five or six people from the production of the film go into the Academy. So they would be part of the voting block that block that could vote Black Panther into a best picture nomination. So that to me is a great win for them. Uh, speaking of the Academy, there are a couple of uh, other uh, new members who I think would uh, qualify as winners this mm -hmm. week. Kumail Nanjiani accepted into the Academy Absolutely. after uh, uh, writing The Big Sick, and he also got cast in the Men in Black movie. So it's a good week for him. Same thing with Timothy Chalamet, mm -hmm. uh, accepted into the Academy on the heels of his uh, Call Me By Your Name performance. He's also cast in Greta Gerwig's sophomore film, uh, or what is shaping up to be her sophomore film, mm -hmm. Little Women. Uh, and then we also got a Beautiful Boy trailer, which I thought looked fantastic. I yeah. think he could absolutely be an Oscar contention, whether he's going to be uh, positioned as, as a lead or in supporting, I'm not sure. But it was a great week to be either Kumail Nanjiani or Timothy Chalamet. It was interesting to watch Jeff watch that Beautiful Boy trailer because it was like watching The Grinch, the animated Grinch, the heart just went like it got too big like he emotionally got involved with that which is a rare thing to see in the collider offices the second winner i would say is Kristen Wiig and Patty Jenkins. Patty Jenkins tweeted out a photo of Kristen Wiig from the set as Barbara Minerva, a.k.a. Cheetah, and seeing her in the uh, in the archaeological museum, or in, in the history museum, seeing all that stuff as an archaeologist or possibly a curator, who knows, but the overall fan reaction was extremely positive when it had been hesitant to confirm Kristen Wiig as Cheetah, seeing her as Barbara Minerva, the fans seemed to turn around positively on the social media, and you can't ask for more than that. Patty Jenkins, just releasing these pictures, incredibly smart. I think she's a winner for doing that. It was a good week for Blumhouse as well. We already touched upon the Firestarter news and, and seeing that project move forward. Uh, there was an announcement uh, this afternoon about Run, Sweetheart, Run, yeah. getting uh, director Shauna Fest to direct that, and that sounded really interesting about uh, a, a date gone wrong, and this woman has to run through Los Angeles uh, to escape her date. We got a trailer for the Purge TV series mm -hmm. over, uh, I think that's just on USA. That looked really cool. And then I checked out the first episode of Sharp Objects, which is going to be debuting on HBO soon. That's the Amy Adams series. It was terrific. Yeah. This is all coming from Blumhouse, so it was a great week for, for them. We have one more winner this week, uh, and it's in the sports world, it's right, John? It's in the sports world, because I can't resist, and you know we're both big basketball fans. We're going to take each other on down the road, top 10 versus the Patriots. LeBron James, I think he's a winner this week for opting out of his one-year contract with the Cavaliers, becoming an unrestricted free agent, opening the door for the Lakers. The Lakers are the overall winner here, because if they get Kawhi Leonard and they get LeBron James and possibly because Le there's rumors LeBron James has been texting Kevin Durant bring Durant into the fold that's just the big three for right now if they get CP3 for taking and take less money that's the big four and then Golden State is on notice you know what he's been saying why would LeBron leave the East why would LeBron leave the East because he's tired of getting to the finals and losing what does it matter if you get to the finals if you keep losing so go to the West battle the Warriors toe-to-toe -to -toe for a while all year and then take the Lakers back to the promised land it's certainly I think the Lakers overall are a winner this week well LeBron was a loser in the NBA finals. Uh, who are some losers this week in the world of entertainment? Well, I would John? say Jared Leto uh, speaking of uh, you know casting news for superhero films we had there with Kristen Wiig and Cheetah. Jared Leto is Morbius. Not that good of a reaction from the online media, from the social media. The internet so, didn't bite. It did not 
bite at all, so to speak. Hey, oh, they did not sink their teeth into that one. What about you? And, and well, just to, to back up about yeah. the, the Morbius stuff, like, is Sony really? Do they think that they can comp compete with the MCU and the DC universe with this Valiant universe? Yeah. This Vin Diesel bloodshot, and, and now they announced a, a Faith movie this uh, this week. Who's she's a character in the uh, Harbinger series, right? So it's a spinoff of that. I just don't know if this is if that stuff is as strong as uh, some of its comic book competition. Yeah. Uh, Paul Feig was on my list. You know, he signed on to do a a, a Christmas movie uh, that was announced to very little fanfare. I just thought it sounded really generic. I think that a couple movies ago, you know, Paul Feig was riding really high. And people were excited about what he's doing mm -hmm. next. And now, you know, it's, it was like, it just, it was like with a whimper, this yeah. was announced. Nobody really cared. Uh, wh uh, what's another one? Well, on I got Indiana list? Jones franchise, I think is kind of a loser this week. It's been pushed past, pushed back to 2020. Now, David Kep has been removed as the writer. John Kasdan has come in now. He's going to rewrite this. Who knows when we're actually going going to see this film and hey Harrison Ford isn't getting any younger so this idea of pushing it back another year yeah I love your de-aging like you see in Infinity War and you'll see more in Ant-Man and the Wasp see, with Indiana Jones right. yeah you can de-age him but he still physically has to do the stunts or has to do all that stuff and he's not getting any younger so to me I think they're a loser in that way uh, and speaking of creative David's David Permit the producer he was doing that uh, Russ and Roger uh, movie about oh, yeah. uh, Russ Meyer and mm -hmm. Roger Ebert he basically came out and said that the Me Too movement uh, cost him that film that that the that you know they're not making it anymore. It was going to be yeah. with Will Ferrell and Josh Gad. Josh Gad was going to play Roger Ebert. Will Ferrell as Russ Meyer, the king of, of sex exploitation movies. But in in this day and age, mm -hmm. it doesn't really seem appropriate. So David Permit dealt a blow. And then finally WME. Tough week for WME yeah. with all. I mean, if you guys haven't read about Master Skip, just Google Master Skip. <laughs> There's some uh, cra crazy stories about a man who was found murdered at the home of a WME agent. Yeah. Um, so it's just not the kind of story that you want to see your your agency associated with in the headlines same thing with terry terry cruz was testifying about yep. his experience and, and uh with the WME so, so yeah some rough headlines for wme though on the bright side they did uh, sign victor oladipo so. <laughs> there we go uh, well, so yeah that, that's this week's we uh winners and losers of the week let us know if you guys like this segment if you want to see more uh john any yeah. fun weekend plans uh yeah i gotta i'm hosting some world cup stuff you'll I'll be posting it online you can follow me at the roca says and you'll see i'm, I'm doing some watch alongs on uh, uh on a net where you'll see yeah yeah he's just gonna go see uncle drew <laughs> this weekend. That's true. Guys, leave a comment, like this video, subscribe to Collider for more, and have a great weekend.